رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا اله الا الله اللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا اله الا الله اللهم اجعلنا من الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر امين رب العالمين I started this month by reminding myself and reminding all of you that uh, Ramadan is a celebration of the revelation of the Quran And while that is the greatest blessing that Allah has ever given humanity, when Allah describes His most loving name, Ar-Rahman, He associates it with the teaching of the Qur'an, Allam al-Qur'an. So that is the greatest blessing Allah has ever given humanity, the greatest act of Allah's love for humanity, His care for humanity, uh, has demonstrated in the fact that He sent us His final message. But the conclusion of Ramadan also reminds us of the conclusion of the 23 years of the Prophet's career as the messenger of the Qur'an. The Prophet's life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is actually a sto- the story of the Qur'an itself. And so when Ramadan comes to an end, we should remind ourselves of how the message of our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, came to an end. Anas radiallahu anhu describes that the day that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, passed away was the darkest day that he has ever seen. And there was never any, any, any sadder day in the life of the believers. Our Prophet would tell us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that if you and I go ever go through any difficulty, they should think of the difficulties that he went through and it will make your difficulties easier. And some of our scholars describe that those great, the greatest of those difficulties was actually on the last day of his life. Other scholars comment that the pain that our Messenger went through sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as he was lying in his bed and he couldn't even get up. He only moved the curtain to see if the Muslims were praying and Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu was leading the prayer. And he noticed that the Prophet had moved the curtain, so he wanted to move away so he could lead the prayer. But the Prophet ﷺ smiled and he just gestured to him so he could finish leading the prayer. This is how weak our Messenger had become ﷺ. And when a Sahabi walked in to, to see him, he just looked at him and he was holding a miswak in his mouth. You know, the, the ancient toothbrush if you will. And the Prophet ﷺ used to love it, but he was too weak to even say that he would like to use one. And our mother Aisha radiallahu anha saw him look at the, at the miswak and she asked him if he would want one and he only nodded his head. And so she gave him one but he couldn't use it because it was too hard. And so she asked if he would like her to soften it and he did that. This, this is the, the, the difficulties or the pains and the weakness that the Prophet ﷺ was experiencing in the last moments of his life. And I like to remind myself of those moments every now and then because... You know, the, one of the goals of the Qur'an is for us to relive the Prophet's life. It's one of the goals, objectives of the Qur'an. That, the, that his life as Allah's Messenger is never just history. It's something we live over and over and over again. That's why when Allah describes events like what the disbelievers say to him, or what, the, what happened at Badr, or at, or at Uhud, or at Ahzab, or what happened at Hudaybiyah that I talked to you about yesterday, those events, Allah could have just told us the lessons from those events, but not recorded that history. But actually the Qur'an recorded those moments because we have to relive the Prophet's life, alayhi salatu wasalam, that's part of our identity. And we have to relive the sadness of losing him, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And so even though we celebrate the greatness of the Qur'an, we also at the same time recognize what a loss we have, that this was the last time Allah spoke directly to humanity. And the most beloved of all of the, all of his creation, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, left. And what he left behind, what he, on the one hand, he's going, Allahumma ila rafiq al a'la. He's, his last words are, I'm going to the highest friend, the one that, that will give me comfort. He's, he continues repeating those words, that he's heading towards his highest friend. But what does he leave us behind with? He will stand again on judgment day. I know in a previous session I talked to you about he will stand in Maqam al-Mahmuda, the place that has been praised, where no creation is going to be able to speak. But he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will stand on that place and he will be given permission by Allah to speak. But before we even discuss what he's going to say, and I've talked to you about that before, what I want you to know today is what Allah says about that day. He says, لِيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ شَهِيدًا عَلَيْكُمْ so that the Messenger وسلم, can be a witness over all of you. One of his last public speeches, and I want you and me to imagine that we were in that public speech, that we were in the audience. And when he said, فَلْيُبَلِّغِ الشَّاهِدَ الغائب, Then the one who is here should go communicate to people that are not here. Go deliver my message to them. Go tell them what I taught you. Teach them what I taught you. This is, these are one of some of the last teachings of the Prophet And think about that. You know, our Prophet ﷺ, his message 
And his, his teaching is not just words. It's not just ideas. It's not just a philosophy or wisdom or concepts. It's actually his personality. إِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ How do we communicate an ayah to people if we don't live an ayah? How do we communicate the message of Rasulullah wasallam if we don't try to act like him? If we don't carry ourselves like him? So it wasn't just about make a pamphlet or make a website or make a video about the ayat of the Qur'an. But it was actually you and I were supposed to walk around representing the Qur'an. And then when people would wonder, why are you this way? Then the words of Allah would come out of our mouth. You know, that we would become ambassadors of this book. This is, this is what we were supposed to be when the Prophet ﷺ was leaving us. So he says that the messenger will be a witness over all of you. He asked us before he left. He asked all of us, did I do my job? Did I communicate the message? Did I deliver the responsibility, the trust that Allah had given? And the entire ummah responded that you have, you did your job. And so now that he did his job transferring his responsibility, he can go back to Allah. But that means that now we are responsible. You see, because his part is done, where, where his part ends, our part begins. Our part begins. So he says, Allah says, وَتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ So he could be a witness against all of you, and you may be a witness against all of humanity. That you now are responsible to deliver this to the rest of humanity. The Prophet ﷺ didn't come to America. He didn't go to Canada. He didn't go to the United Kingdom. He didn't go to Australia. He didn't go to different parts of India. He didn't go to the rest of the world. But his people, the people that he made responsible are now going. Generation after generation after generation. We are representing him everywhere we go. Whether you accept that or not. Whether you recognize that responsibility or not. Whether you consider yourself a casual Muslim, a serious Muslim, a religious Muslim, a liberal Muslim, it doesn't matter what label you put on yourself. When Judgment Day comes, those labels will disappear. You will just be one of the people that Allah made responsible that you were witness over humanity. And you know what that means? That means, imagine this. You know how in, when you're on trial, when somebody's standing in trial, then they have um, witnesses that testify against them, right? They're witnesses that test, or they're brought to testify. So the Prophet ﷺ will be brought as a witness to testify. Did you teach them? Did you deliver the message that you were supposed to deliver? And he'll testify, I did my part. لِيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ شَهِيدًا عَلَيْكُمْ That's that part. He testifies that he did his part. Then humanity, which is on the other side, the rest of humanity, because the Prophet ﷺ could only deal with so many people. So the rest of humanity, the only way they could get the message is us. That's, we're in between. We're the barrier. So the rest of humanity testifies, and Allah asked them, did they deliver what the Prophet taught them to you? Did, did they receive, did, they, did you see Islam in them? Did you see this Prophet's character in the way they did business? The way they spoke to each other? The way they showed mercy? The way they forgave? The way they judged? The way they thought? The way they acted? Did, did you see, did, you, did it remind you of this man Muhammad Wasallam? And when humanity says, no, we didn't, what? What are you talking about? When we saw these people, we wanted to run away from them. We didn't want to be more like them, we wanted to be nothing like them. You know? Do we represent as a people, as a people, the, the responsibility that Allah's Messenger gave us sallallahu alayhi wasallam? You know, sometimes when I travel, people say, you know, the ummah is chosen by Allah Azza wa Jalla. We're the best of people, the best of nations raised for my, mankind. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat nas. These words scare me. They really do scare me. Because if you look at our behavior, you know, and I've been, I've been in, in the field of, you know, corporate work and in business for some time. And it's just sad to say, but when somebody says, hey, I want to get into business, I was like, make sure they're not Muslim. Are they Muslim? Okay, be, be extra careful. Just make sure you're safe. Because the way we deal with each other is ridiculous. The way we do business is ridiculous. How many, how many wives have not even been given their mahar yet? How many people have been cheated out of you know, inheritance law? How, how many brothers are, are fighting each other over the fair share of inheritance? Or sisters are denied altogether. Sisters are denied altogether. How many people are borrowing money and then changing their phone number? Huh? This is what we've become. This is, this is a sadiq al amin This is the amana he gave us. So on the one hand, Rasulullah is testifying that he did his part. Now we're responsible. On the other hand, all of humanity will testify against us. All of humanity will testify against us. وَتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ The Qur'an is either a witness for you or a witness against you. That's it. That's all it becomes at the end of the day. This, this word of Allah that we're celebrating this month, what we leave this with, what we leave, what we're celebrating is actually that Allah has given us light. 
Quran is called light. Light has no purpose. Light has no purpose if you don't walk in it. The purpose of light is to show you the way. If you have light, you say, I look so, the road looks so nice now, it's all lit. But you still sit there and go the other way. Then there's no purpose to that light. You understand? This is why, go and contemplate the ayat of Ramadan in Surah Al-Baqarah. There's only a few ayat. Go read them yourself. The, in the 180s in Surah Al-Baqarah. Read those ayat and look immediately what comes right after the ayat of Ramadan. Right after the ayat of Ramadan. What does Allah say? He says, لا تأكلوا أموالكم بينكم بالباطل ولا تدلوا بها إلى الحكام لتأكلوا فريقا من أموال الناس بالإثم وأنتم تعلمون Basically, I'll summarize the lessons of the ayah. Don't scam each other when it comes to money. Be honest business people. Fix your money matters. Fix the way you do business. Fix the way you... Don't bribe people. Don't engage in corruption. Don't be part of anything corrupt. These are the words of Allah right after Ramadan. Why? Because when you do business, that speaks more for you than any da'wah. The way you deal with your money, because when you do business, you don't just do business with Muslims, you do business with non-Muslims too. You do business with everybody. And the way you carry yourself in business and in money, that's actually the first representation of the kind of person you are. Why do you think the Prophet ﷺ was called Sadiq and Amin? Truth and honest, truthful and honest. Not because he was preaching truth and honesty, because he was doing business with the people. Because he was in business with them. And they dealt business with him. That's why they understood his honesty. So the way we carry ourselves at work, the way we carry ourselves at schools, the way we carry ourselves in our jobs, you're supposed to be the most honest people in your jobs. When you're getting paid for a certain number of hours, you, you, you are doing that work, and whether the security camera is on or not, or the clock is there or not, or the manager is there or not, you're doing that work because you are answerable to Allah. Awfu bil uqud. You're, you're answerable to Allah. You're the last people that will ever cheat on your taxes. You're the last people that will ever lie on a resume. You're the last people that are going to do anything shady or crooked to get ahead in business. And that's because you have Qur'an. Because this messenger came sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and made you a different kind of people, made me a different kind of person. This is what we're actually celebrating. And so what do we say? This is the last thing. What do we say when Ramadan ends? We just finished salah. What did we just recite? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. What does Allahu Akbar mean? That Allah is greater. Wali Allah. So you declare Allah greater. What does that mean? Allah is greater than my greed. Allah is greater than my needs. Allah is greater than my wants. Allah is greater than everything else. It's not just Ramadan that Allah was greater. Now, it's ready, now you're ready to decide, Allah is greater in everything. Just like all of Ramadan, Allah was greater than your hunger. Allah was greater than your thirst, wasn't He? Every single day. And now it's time for Allah to be greater in your life, in everything else. That's actually what we're celebrating as we recite these words and we do these takbirat when we head towards the Eid prayer. So let's have a reason to celebrate. You know, let's not become the tragic you know, the, the, the irony of it. The people celebrate obedience to Allah for 30 days and they do the most disobedience to Allah at Eid. <laughs> they have the craziest parties where they disobey Allah in the most vile ways at Eid. And it's like, it's Eid, man, you gotta enjoy yourself. Eid is a celebration that we obey Allah, not a celebration, a license to disobey Allah. You know, some people are almost celebrating that the shaitan has been released. Oh God, thank God again. You know, <laughs> that's what it looks like. Don't become like those people, then that means we have no reason to celebrate. That's not a reason to celebrate, you know? So may Allah Azza wa Jal accept all of our worship and really make us a people that understand what it means to celebrate this remarkable Eid. Allah has brought us through this journey every single year, every Ramadan. It's supposed to be reliving not just the Qur'an, reliving the legacy, the struggle, the sacrifice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That man sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loves you more than your family will ever love you. He bled so you can have Qur'an. He almost died so you can have Qur'an. He starved so you can have Qur'an. He was left, he was kicked out of his home so you can have Qur'an. He lived in a cave and he was eating leaves and you know tying rocks to his stomach so his stomach wouldn't grovel so you and I can recite Qur'an. He was telling his starving daughter when she couldn't have food for, to eat for two, three days, just say subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. So you and I can have Quran. How are we going to honor that legacy? How are we going to honor that man's sacrifice? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's a show of loyalty for you and me. What he has done for us, and what are we going to do to pay that back? That's, that's really what we're here to celebrate, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah give all of us a, a blessed Eid and really a new way of thinking about what it means to be Muslim. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.